Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I'm back at work on the Super C. Actually, I never stop. It just takes days and days to get these things done. And today I'm focusing on the hitch. It isn't as simple as old, old U-shaped draw bars on the H's and M's. There's a lot more to it. I took the two-point fast hitch completely apart, and look at all these pieces. There's all kinds of arms and pins and doodads and receivers and balls and all kinds of stuff to deal with. Here's more of it. Just keeps going. I took this apart mainly because I couldn't get in to paint it the right way, the way I feel comfortable with doing a good job. And I couldn't clean it up the way I'd like to do. And also, I've never had one apart, so I wanted to see what it take to took it apart. I'll show you it going back together. Really wasn't a big deal. But before I get to that, I want to show you something that saved me a lot of money, and that's making fuel lines. All you need to make a fuel line for these old tractors is brake line. I go to the hardware store and I pay a couple bucks for a piece of brake line, and it even comes with the fittings in it. All you need to buy is ferrules. Now, originally, International Harvester used these funky fittings, which is kind of like a ferrule already attached to the nut to make a compression fitting, and it slides right on, well, it's a little tight fit from the pipe cutter, but it slides right on, and when you tighten it down, the ferrule makes a tight seal to the pipe through compression. If you don't have access to these fittings, and these fittings are kind of pricey, all you do is you get the fittings that came on the brake line. Usually they come with these fittings right on them, and then you can use a modern ferrule on the pipe, and it'll seal. Now technically this ferrule isn't the proper fitting for this nut because it's got a taper on both sides and the old ones had a square shoulder on them. But we're just dealing with gravity pressure here, not a lot of pressure. And this does have a slightly sloped face on the inside to seal well enough to the ferrule to make a leak-free installation. I've done a lot of them this way and when you look at the price of fuel lines on the internet that are custom bent with the correct fittings, you save a lot of money doing it this way. So all you got to do is bend it to fit. This is the old fuel line, which was made out of copper. And I'm not too crazy about using copper fuel lines, but I'm going to use this old one as a template to bend out my new one. And you just got to be gentle with this so you don't kink it. Just takes patience, that's all. And some test fitting. I actually think I'm going to straighten this out from what the old one was. The old one had all kinds of loops in it. It's almost a straight shot down to the carburetor. Ooh, we're getting awful close here. That is pretty good. So we got to cut it right about there. So this is the fitting that came on the brake line. It'll screw into the carburetor and the fuel bowl. Then you put the ferrule on. We gotta bend this a little bit to get it in the fitting. There we go. Ferrule, fitting. There we go. Except I gotta take it back off to paint it. It's the next day. I got everything painted for the hitch. So now we're gonna put it back together. And this hitch is kind of a confusing mess to put back together. It's one of those things where the parts manual isn't really much of a help because it shows the parts all apart. But this is my piece one right here. This is the thing to which other things start to attach. So we're going to figure it out. The whole key to this thing is you've got these eccentrics or whatever you want to call them here that grab onto but allow rotate these pieces that go in and the trick in getting it apart was figuring out how that whole system worked and then taking lots of photos to look at for reassembly. Sometimes photos are better than a parts book. So we're going to put these two pieces together. I know that one goes that way and this one goes this way and they do that kind of deal. This side gets plow bolts because they sit flush in here into recesses and then this whole thing slides on to the yoke here and then for this joint here we've got a two piece one half to hold it in and then we've got this that holds the pieces 
all in. So that goes over here, captures like that. Then these sides go on like this. And now it's captured in that knuckle. And now we gotta work, keep the pieces all together. <laughs> Oh man, keep the pieces all together and slide this piece up and in. Get it on the bolts. Now the other side goes together with this plate. And these two pins got to line up because this thing has got to go in here before we secure the second plate because it's held in. Get in there. A couple of cotter pins to hold it together temporarily. Bring this down. You know, you're supposed to sit in a hole. And you stand up straight. Didn't your mother tell you to stand up straight? And then this goes... Your pain. You are your pain. Carriage bolts. You gotta go in there. Here we go. The next job is to put these back on. And... These were clever the way they put them together. So they go on here, and I'm going to rotate them so that they're on a less worn surface. There's a wear pattern here of where it rode. So I'll flip the ball around like that, and it slides onto here. And then hidden under here, there's a spring pin that holds it onto the shaft, which you just have to rotate the ball around and expose. And get the hole lined up, it just barely exposes when you turn it. Next I got out this big yoke, and these things are called the link and swivel stops. And they go on here, and then there's a castle nut and a cotter pin to secure them. And then this big yoke goes over the assembly I started with. And these brackets go on here. This carriage bolt at the front that goes through here was worn about halfway through from jerking on the hitch over 70 years, so I had to get myself a new one. That should tighten it up some. And these pins with a spring ball on the end of them, lock the hitch side to side. And then this whole mess has got to flip over so it's right side up. I got one bolt on the other side. We can get this one on. I don't know, I might have to use a jack to get the rest of this up. And the other side. Well, that's lighter. I like that. I almost forgot that this doohickey's got to go on the front of the hitch. That's why these bolts were so long. And this arm has to go on this swivel ball here. Then this rod goes in here. And what this arm does, I uh, disconnected it again, is if you're plowing, you take the pin out and then this telescopes to another pinhole that's inside of it. I can't find it, but it doesn't really matter. And then you hook it on here and you can use it to control the draft on your plow like this. So with the lever, you control the, how much your plow is cutting in on the back versus on the front. 
But for normal use, you just pin it up in the fixed position there. Another day, another batch of parts. Actually, it was about three days. What have we got here? Well, we've got the hydraulic cylinder for the two-point, and we've got parts that finishes up the two-point hitch and the hydraulics. More hitch parts. They seem to never end. There's so many pieces on this hitch. The toolbox slash seat support slash hydraulic support goes through here. All set. Belt pulley safety shield. New PTO safety shield repainted to match, of course. Hydraulic lines all cleaned up, ready for installation. I think the first thing we'll do here is get this battery, battery box, this toolbox down. Toolbox slash seat support slash hydraulic support. That way I can push the tractor head so you all can see what I'm doing on the hitch. Here's our fast hitch the way it stands now. It's attached, but there's nothing to raise and lower it or tilt it yet. The first thing we're going to put together is the bell crank mechanism. And what the bell crank does is it tilts the hitch. What this thing does is it allows you to either lock it level or have it go through its full range of tilt or to have a float. Say when you're cultivating and you want your gauge wheels to go float a certain bit based on the contour of the ground, this system allows you to set either of those three situations. Either? All of. All of those three situations. And this long arm, which is called the leveling link, goes and connects to the bell crank in back into the touch control in front. Put the pin in here. And the other end of this leveling arm goes into the bell crank here. I'm going to get positioned correctly. And then we have another pin with a spring ball on the end of it that hooks it together. So in the end, what I've got here is a system where if I have it hooked up this way, I can use the right rock shaft lever to tilt the hitch side to side with it hooked this way. If I unhook this and take that leveling arm off, I can hook up this support here and the slot in the support gives me some float in the width of the hitch for cultivating and whatnot. Or I can hook it to this hole, this single hole that's down in the bottom here and fix the hitch in the level position. Let's get the top support for the hitch on. This is the little trough that the hydraulic lines go through. And this is, we'll just call this the box. I'm going to scrape off the, or take off the tape covering the serial number plate here. And in case anyone was wondering, this is the serial number of the tractor. FC187382. I like to keep these serial number plates original. You can see what the patina on the tractor was originally. Let's get this all hooked in place here. Everything's got to line up. Bolts go way down in here. And before we tighten anything down, we want to put these brackets on here and get everything properly aligned. Just get everything started so we know the bolts are in the holes. And let's make sure that this shaft slides through before we tighten everything down too. It's got a line in the bushings. There we go. Tighten everything down. Hydraulic cylinder. Of course this is what raises and lowers the hitch. Next comes the lift rod, and this is what actually lifts the hitch up, like so. Well, you're not fitting. How do you go in there? Little Jenga here. Ah, there we 
we go. And with this lift rod, right now it's in the float position. So if you set it here, the hitch will float based on where the hydraulic cylinder is. So it'll float up from there. If you don't want it to float, which I don't usually have it floating for operation, you can put this pin in and then it's locked. Although, you know, my hydraulic cylinder is not connected, so it's moving. Hydraulic line time. This is a check valve for the hydraulic cylinder, so we got four hydraulic lines to hook up to it. This has got to slide through the trough under here. I know you fit. Get in there. There we go. Well, you probably, you got to go one over here. Let's get secured onto the trough here. With these little teeny bolts. Of course, in the rear, these hoses attach to the hydraulic cylinder. And in the front, they attach to this hydraulic valve. I gotta take the temporary plugs out. Yeah, that one's out. The longer one's got to go to this fitting down here. I know, I took photos before I disassembled. And the shorter one goes into this port. Well, we're here, we can put in this bracket that holds these lines in place. Also, while we're here, we might as well put the battery cables on. It's a positive cable, goes to starter. Let's do it this way. There we go. Okay. Now we can make our way over and around and through, in between. This clip for the battery cable tightened down here. This cable came from the Brillman company where I get wiring harnesses. And man, they do an excellent job at whatever they do. And this battery cable is very nice. It's got a woven exterior on it. And just very nice. There. This is a negative ground cable. Of course, originally these tractors were positive ground, but I've converted it to 12 volt negative ground and this is the way that the cable would have been routed from the factory. In other words, the ground grounded on the headlight stand or tree right here. Of course this isn't the best ground. It'd be better off being grounded straight to the starter but with a 12 volt battery cranking on this little motor it's not going to be an issue. And I like to keep them looking factory, so this will all be hidden under the battery cover. I just got them temporaried in here. Well, I can't resist. We got to try some things. Now, well, this light doesn't have good enough ground, but that one does. This is just fun stuff I'm doing. PTO shield. These shields, I haven't seen a single Super C where the shield wasn't mangled on them. <laughs> this one off of this was mangled. I took it off a long time ago. This is a new one. They're such light little bendy thingies. It's easy to trash them. How am I going to get in there? I don't know. 
this PTO shield's going to have to wait because I forgot to paint the lever that comes up through here. So I got to put that on first. But hey, the final coup de grace, the knob. We never had any of these knobs on our tractors until I started restoring them. They were all bare end. I didn't even know they came with knobs until I started restoring them. And they do. Vroom, vroom. Oops, reverse. Here's where we're at. I think I got one more batch of parts to hang and paint and those are the seat parts and the wheel weights and then some small little miscellaneous pieces but one more batch decals are in the mail hopefully they'll be here in the next few days put them on put the seat put the wheel weights on fill the fluids start it up so I'm guessing one more episode of assembly and then an episode of starting up and starting to work out the bugs. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're having a great New Year's, and I'll see you next time.